Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're going to do a few section two BMAT questions. A lot of you have asked for this and so I'm just going to uh, go through a few section two questions and we'll talk about how I'm getting to the answer and um, yes, my reasoning practically. So today we're doing the 2016 section two paper. We'll do a few questions and again I'll talk you through how I'm going through it. Now I'll try and do a few of these over the next few days, so do request videos or do ask about certain questions which you'd like me to go through. Okay, so first question. Um, diagram shows a kidney and associated vessels from a healthy individual. Great. Uh, which row identifies correctly the vessel along with the concentration of view of the kidney? So one's quite big, two, okay, that's going in. Wow, you don't know, it doesn't, like, it doesn't say which vessel, is this the vein or an artery? Uh, actually, oh, you can work it out by looking at this. So this is a thin wall, big lumen, that must be a vein, that must be an artery, great. This is a ureter, we know that's the pipe coming out of the kidney, going to the bladder. Okay, so highest concentration of urea, well the arteries are is arterial blood, so it doesn't go to an organ, but then it gets to the kidney. The kidney filters out urea actually to go into the urine, so it must be in the ureter. So it's between D and E, so it must be, um, well, renal, three is a renal vein, four is a renal vein. Well, renal vein goes into the vena cava, the inferior vena cava, which is vein, which must be thinner, so it must be, um, three must be the renal vein, so that's D there. The answer is D, very good. Um, let's go to question four. So this is a math question, so we'll try and do a few different questions today to give you guys a variety of different, uh, you know, different mixture of questions. So question four is a straight line passes through points P and Q, great. Uh, which of the following is an equation of a straight line parallel to P, Q? So a parallel line is usually of the same gradient, um, but it's slightly displaced. So we need to work out the gradient, so dy over dx. So it'll be, um, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 equals um, pq, so it's going to p2q, so it's 3 minus 9 over minus 3 minus 6. Great, so it'll be uh, minus 6 over minus 9 equals uh, minus 2 over minus 3, the minus cancels equals 2 over 3. Great. You see, I'm not skipping steps here because um, we have to be really careful with the math and the BMAT. So, the gradient, therefore, m equals 2 over 3. The next thing is uh, quickly work out the gradient of line, y equals mx plus c. So, um, well, actually, given that we worked with the gradient, uh, we know that the other line will have the same gradient but a different number. So it will just be this, and no other, because you see, this 2 over 3 is the value of m, um, this m here, which goes as the uh, the gradient, and c is just the, um, the, the y-intercept. So technically, uh, we've, got the, we've got the right answer there. And actually, none of the others have 2 over 3 as a gradient, so we're, we're looking good. And always remember, if it's a single y, if it's only one y here, it's always the number in front of x which gives a gradient. But let's say it was like 2y equals this is this, then we'd have to sort of work out what, you know, we'd have to change that equation to this format, where we get one single y equals mx plus c, because then only can we take the m value as the gradient. Um, yeah, yeah, that can make sense. So, um, let's do five. So, a diagram shows some DNA stuff. A length of DNA can be removed from one organism into another. So, cut out by X. So, I'm cutting out some DNA. W is a chromosome, um, not a gene, of course, because a gene is, you know, a chromosome is made of many genes. So, we can get rid of already DEF. It's cut out by X. X must be a restriction enzyme because the restriction enzymes cut things and take out genes. Um, but remember, if I cut with a restriction enzyme in one place, I must must cut with the same restriction enzyme in another place because then I have the same sticky ends or the same sort of blunt ends, it only matter, but the same sticky ends. So actually Y must also be a restriction enzyme because it's um it's cutting, you know, the same sort of uh, ending of the DNA and so we can insert the new bit of DNA and so the insertion is in a done and sealed by ligase. So the answer should be B and five, yes the answer is B. Great. Um Yes, and for previous question, also four was correct. Moving on, um, okie dokie, let's talk about question seven. Some chemistry, nickel has an atomic number of 28. Atomic number means the number of protons is 28. The mass numbers of its four isotopes are 58, 60, 61, and 62. So isotopes, um, isotopes are when we have the same number of protons but different number of neutrons, great. Three statements are made about the isotopes of nickel. All of them have the same chemical properties. Well, yes, because a chemical property is determined by the number of protons. So that's correct. Um, 
All of them have new glycogenated proteins. Yes, that is true. Protons. And one of them has a nucleus that contains 60 neutrons. So if it contains 60 neutrons plus 28 protons, that means we should get a mass number of 90. Well, that's wrong. So I think it's 1, 2 only. The answer is D. And the answer is D indeed. Um, so, um, okay, okay, question 8. The mean mass of a group of n people is 75 kilograms. Therefore, the total mass of that group is 75 times n kg. Um, Karen, Jim, Karen, and Leroy join this group. Without anyone leaving, the mean mass is 78 kilograms. Okay. Um, what is the value of n? The mean mass of Jim, Karen, and Leroy is 90 kilograms. To new total mass, let's call it the n total mass, is 78 times n plus 3. Right? And then... We know that um, these three people have a total mass, 3 times 90. So the total mass of these kiddos is 270. So we know the difference between these two formulas is 270. So we can do 78n plus 3 minus 75n equals 270. Therefore, does that kind of make sense? Because the mean mass of these new added people is 90. Therefore, the total mass is 90 times 3. That's 270. And therefore, this is the new total mass of the whole group, and this is the old mass before these kids were added. So the difference is 270 because we're adding these three people. So we can just expand this. So 78n plus, so 78 times 3, 24, 23, plus 234, minus 75n equals 270. Therefore, 78 minus 75 is 3n equals 270 minus 234 equals 36. Therefore, n equals 12. B. The answer is B indeed. Fantastic. Um, so, let's do nine. Um, the following statements are features about an, of an enzyme from a healthy human. Um, from a healthy human. Hmm. Actually, these are statements. Okay, fine. That's the question here. So then we have to, which enzyme has these features? So it works at an optimum pH below four. So low pH means acid. So it must work in the stomach or something. It digests a substrate into amino acids. Okay, we know that pep Peptidase does that in the stomach, again, proteins and amino acids. It works at an optimum temperature of around 37 degrees. Very good. So I think that's probably a protease from the stomach. Uh, number one, it has to be a protease because it's producing amino acids, all of these can go. But then between small intestine and stomach, well, it's working in a pH below 4. And the, stom the stomach has acid in it, which is a low pH. Um, whereas in the small intestine, when I go from the stomach to the small intestine, you're releasing bile, which actually is alkaline, which neutralizes any acid from the stomach into the small intestine, so this enzyme won't work in the small intestine. So it must be F, and the answer is F indeed. Very good. Um, let's move on a bit. Uh, let's, uh, let's do this one. So which of the following molecules are involved in both aerobic and anaerobic respiration in a healthy human? Well, um, okie dokie. Well, glucose, yes, for sure. Well, carbon dioxide is in an aerobic respiration because the carbon dioxide is formed by having um, the oxygen being used in the aerobic respiration, that's the equation. And if you think about it, the equation is glucose plus oxygen goes to uh, carbon dioxide plus water. Always remember these equations. Whereas in anaerobic respiration, the equation is glucose straight to lactic acid. The lactic acid is then later processed once you have oxygen, but in pure anaerobic respiration, you have no uh, carbon dioxide being produced, actually. You have carbon dioxide being produced in the, when yeast anaerobically respire, and that's why you get sort of bubbly you have no beer and stuff, um, but not in humans. Lactic acid is only produced in anaerobic, so actually it's only two. So the answer is B. 13 is B, indeed. Um, very good, very good. Let's move on a bit. Let's do... Um, okay, let's do question 15. Uh, some physics, a bit of math and physics. So, um, diagram represents a satellite communication between two points on Earth. The distances, okay, fine. The frequency of the waves is that. The speed of light is that. So the equation we need to think of is C equals F lambda. Um, what type of wave is used in such a link? And what is the time delay between a signal being transmitted and received? Well, actually, um, you can't use ultraviolet rays because it's that, that's absorbed by the atmosphere. Think about it. The sun's UV rays are mostly absorbed by the atmosphere. So it can't be E, F, G, H. So already I get rid of 50% of those. Now, what is the um, time delay? So that's a good question. Um, one second. So the time it takes um, 
between signal being transmitted and then being received at the receiving station. So that's 45,000, 45,000, that's 90,000 kilometers. Now, the speed of light, which is also the speed of the microwave, remember the electromagnetic wave is, um, you know, all of the waves in the EM spectrum travel at the speed of light. So um, it's 90,000 kilometers, three times 10 to the power eight. So what I'm going to do actually is convert this 90,000 kilometers into meters times 10 to the power three. So I can make this nine times 10 to the power seven, technically, that's right, um, that's meters. And then speed of light travels at three times 10 to the power eight. So I need to do nine times 10 to the power seven divided by three times 10 to the power eight. All of this is in standard form. Cancel that three, one, which is equal to three times 10 to the power minus one. So that's 0 0.3 seconds. So the answer should be D. Um, and the answer is 15 D indeed. Okay, guys, next question. Let's do question 16. So this diagram shows a quadrilateral PQRS. Okay, given that tan theta equals four over three, what is the area of the quadrilateral PQRS? Okay, so tan theta, we already know, Sokotoa. So, um, how would I say? So tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. So getting over this, 4 over 3 is, you know, um, opposite over adjacent. It was opposite over adjacent. Now, let's quickly sort this diagram out. So, um, should not wrong with that. That's 11. So if this side is, um, if this side is 5, then this must also be 5. And then this is a right hand triangle now. And then if this is five, then this must be six. So I know that um, tan theta is opposite. That's a hypotenuse. And this is the adjacent, opposite over adjacent. So if, oh, the adjacent six though. Ah, okay, okay. So this is tan theta, the adjacent six. And to have four over three as an equivalent fraction of you know, something over six, I need eight over six. Remember, eight over six is equal to four over three, right? We're just timesing up and down by, top and bottom by um, by two. So technically that's right. So that's eight here and six here. So the area of this is five times uh, eight is 40 centimeters squared. And then here it's eight, uh, eight times six divided by two, which is 48 over two equals 24. So 40 add 24 equals 64. The answer should be C, and um, it's C indeed. Right, guys, and with that, let's call it today. If you want me to do a few more questions like this, and do let me know. Um, I did this rather quickly today. I'm quite busy today. But, um, yeah, so hopefully, hopefully it is useful, and uh, you guys are revising very hard. And I do, of course, wish you the best of luck whilst revising. Uh, I'll try and do some more Section 2 videos, but also another Section 1 video in time for exam. Uh, Wednesday is approaching very quickly, and so it's important that you are working very hard. And this is the final, the final approach. So keep it up, guys. Right here. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye bye.